Hey, what is up survivors? My name is Cap and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more 7 Days to Die playing in Alpha 15. Now for the people who've been playing this for a good long time, this may seem like a no brainer, but I do know there's a lot of people who are new to the game or people just haven't really got that far into it yet. So they're not quite aware of how this works. So I want to teach you guys about how the trading system works, these little trading outposts and vending machines. Not that complicated, but still, there's not a whole lot in the wikis about it because people are still discovering those. Trader Joe's are these new NPC locations here. They are landlocked, so you cannot build anything in them or around them here. They are a safe haven during the day. At night, from dusk till dawn, they will lock the doors, turn this over to closed, and kick you outside. Now, just for people who are looking for them around the map, I'm playing a Navis game. And so if you want to know where one is, I found one in this little burnt area of the world in here. And here's the uh, lati latitude and longitude coordinates and stuff if you want to try and figure out how to get here. So anyway, let's head inside and I can show you guys around. Always make sure you close the doors behind you so that nothing can fall you in. Okay. Now, one of the new things they added to the games are vending machines, and there's three different kinds here. There's the regular vending machines, which you can actually go through and buy things. And with that, I have to say that the new in-game currency they've added are these Duke Casino coins that you can find laying around the world. And you can also get these by selling things, and I'll show you that in a minute. So you have these vending machines where you can just buy items here. Then there are the rentable vending machines, which you'll see some like this, and you can have a chance to rent a vending machine and set your own items in there to be sold. Now, in order to rent a vending machine, you just open it up, whatever you click on where it says rent, and it costs 2,500 of these Duke coins to get. But they're not really that hard to find, because you can find them laying around in places, and you can sell almost anything, basically, so it, it levels up pretty quickly on how much you can get. So you can go through and you can rent these, and it lasts for 30 in-game days, which is about 20 hours real time. And then once you actually buy these, like I've saved up and I bought this one, you can put items in here. And you can go through, and let's say I wanted to put in some lamb rations. You just go through, add it to it, and now it is in your vending machine. And you can go through and change the pricing. You can lower it, you can raise it based on whatever you want to actually do here. If you set it too high, of course, nobody's going to buy it. And then you can just take it back out if you want to. And when you come back in up here at the top, you can see where how much money you've actually made. Now, the in-game wiki and the patch note says that NPCs can actually buy the products here. I don't know how often they do that. I don't know what exactly triggers them to buy that. I haven't seen it myself. As you can see, I haven't made a single dollar yet. But if you owned one of these inside of here and you're playing in a public world, people could actually buy from you. So anyway, let me show you into the uh, NPC world of this thing. Now, there are five different people that sell in these games, five different NPCs. Like him, this is Trader Wrecked, there's Trader Joel, Trader Bob, Trader Hugh, and Trader Jimmy. Now, these are the guys and stuff that you can actually trade with. They all have different personalities. Most of them are pretty foul-mouthed. And yeah, you can go in... You want. You can see they just they're not happy that you're there but you know whatever so you can sort by all the stuff they have you can sort by you know all or whatever and this is what the stuff they have the quality it is and how much it actually costs and you can sell stuff to them too say like this football helmet you can see how much the sell price is up at the top right hand corner of the items you have so you see it doesn't take a whole lot to sell stuff to them to be able to make some decent money you can even sell wood if you want to go through and do that they don't buy rocks and if it's something like this you know tools these tools that they're not going to want there's not going to be a price of that just means they're not going to buy them now the last vending machine is something that doesn't show up until you are basically worthy and it's a player owned vending machine and you can buy it from these guys now i'm not far enough into the game to actually see them yet here but you, what you'll see is this safe right here it's called the secret stash area of the vineyard here. And as you level up and as you've played the game and stuff, more and more items will appear here and give you the option to buy some really cool items. Of course, they'll cost a whole I'd lot. I'd go broke with more customers like you. Exactly. Now, one thing of note is to check back fairly often with the NPCs here because they do mix up their inventory that they have available to sell, you know, as time goes along. So you have a chance to buy some different items with them. And again, about these outposts, these are called the White River Settlements here. There's supposedly five of them listed around the world that can be found in the Navisgane maps or the Random Gen maps. And again, they are only open during the daylight hours. If you are here when they get ready to close about 10 o'clock, uh, I think it's about 10 o'clock, from dusk till dawn, you'll see they'll actually broadcast over the speaker that they're about to close. Just to let you folks know, the Trader Joel's closing soon. 
themselves. And if you're inside, when closing times happen, it just teleports you outside and you're out there for you know, on your own in the middle of the night and you cannot get back in until daytime. It doesn't matter what you do. It's a protected area. It will kick you back out no matter how you try and get back in. So anyway, that's about it. They're not really that complicated, but like I said, I know a lot of people are still kind of new to the game and they're still trying to figure out how it goes. Um, one thing of note is if you do use the uh, player-owned vending machine that you can buy from these guys later on down the road, make sure you put it in your land block protected area of your housing and stuff because they can be destroyed and all your stuff can be looted. So anyway, if you have any questions, do drop them in the comment section below and I'll happily answer them as quick as I can. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, hit that thumbs up button for me and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any further videos. Thank you guys so much for your time. You guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later.